morning. I'm going to go ahead and get started here, I guess. It's, it's 10 o'clock. Uh, welcome to Blogging 101. We're going to run this just pretty easily. I'm going to start out with how many of you know what a blog is? How many of you actually have a blog? Okay. <laughs> so we can, we can bypass that part of the process now. Um, why do you blog? I, I'd like to open this up kind of for group participation. So anybody, why, why do you blog? Um, I started a webcomic about a year ago. Oh, cool. And I'm kind of on and off with it. And um, normally the blogging content is just kind of content that either goes along with the comic or something that kind of shares my thoughts. Okay, so it kind of correlates with it. Yeah. All right. Anybody else? <laughs> so you liked our, uh, our, our keynote over here. Um, okay, I mean, people do blogs for a lot of different things. Um, you know, we have, we have mommy bloggers, we have political bloggers, we have um, media technology bloggers, we have people who are blogging to expand their, their business outreach, whatever the case may be, blogging is, is becoming a trending thing. Obviously, we're sitting here at PodCamp and I'm talking about blogging. Um, now, as far as why do I need a blog? Like, people have their, their own individual reasons, and it just kind of goes from there. Obviously, you people are all here because you're interested in blogging. You'd like to know some more information about it, and this is where I'm going to try to help you out with it. Um, just to kind of gauge as far as what you all know as far as blogging is concerned, uh, does anybody host their own blog? Like, do you have your own domain name? Yeah. Okay. Anybody use just a standard blogging website like um, blogger.com, wordpress.com? Anybody not have a blog set up and is trying to figure out how to set up a blog? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> still kind of come in that category, too, because it's not okay. working the way I'd like it to. Well, as far as blogging is concerned, each person, it's, it's kind of a learn and adapt technique. It seems to work best as, as far as my experience is concerned and people that... I, I coordinate with and, and work with. Um, where do you currently have your blog through? Um, I, I'm hosted through Yahoo and I'm using WordPress. Oh, okay. So you're doing through uh, WordPress. Yeah. How do you like WordPress itself or is Yahoo? Oh, honestly, I love it. I love okay. WordPress. I wish, I wish that the one-click install would give me a little more leeway over it because okay. it automatically sets my URL up to be you know, my URL slash blog for my blog homepage. And I want really my blog to be just my URL. Okay. I kind of want to build it out from there. <coughs> so I, I know enough on the web to be dangerous, but not to do anything productive. <laughs> not to do anything productive. You know? Gotcha. So I, I'm still trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I do those sort of things? Okay. That, I will be honest, is a little bit over my area of ex expertise. Um, but there are definitely people here. Awesome. Um, we can talk afterwards, and right. I can point you in the direction of a couple of people who might be able to help you out with that. Um, Anybody else hosting elsewhere that, does anybody have like their own designated like URL that they do everything themselves? Yeah. How does that work out? So far, <coughs> everything's fine. I, I went with a domain company, Okay. got my own URL, and I haven't had any problems with it. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead, since everybody's already blogging and, and just kind of going through, Obviously, you're here. What questions do you have that you're looking for as far as your blog is concerned? Anybody? <laughs> I, I kind of like this to be like an open dialogue. It, it makes things a little bit easier, yes. <laughs> I'll start. Um, I do the homepage stories on CMU's website. Okay. And we just redesigned our homepage. We want to go towards featuring less in depth interviews mm -hmm. for our alumni and students. Essentially, you're looking for like a, a title that people are going to be essentially clicking into. To like a one sentence, two sentences. Like how do I make my, you know, what I'm used to doing, putting my message out there through a story, taking it and using one visual, maybe a video, and two or three sentences to draw the reader in. So 
How that's, is, that's why I'm here. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, I have a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how is that working out? I mean, have you... It's only been about three days. <laughs> oh, so this is absolutely so this a new... Is very new, yeah. Oh, wow. That's why. That's why you're here. Um, again, meet people this weekend because the more people that you meet and the more people that you interact with, people will have different ways that they're doing different things. Um, like I know that if you look at the, the PodCamp website, you know, we have our basic blog posts that we've been putting up um, announcing sponsors, announcing, you know, key integral information for the, the weekend. And then we also have our little Twitter feed along the side. Um, perhaps you could incorporate something like that um, that kind of gets your snippets in there. You can click on that and then it expands into a larger article type of thing. I was thinking on the way in today, too. I had to do this article for our fall line. If there's so many seeing new actors on TV that, you know, premiering shows, you know, this week. And reporting people, I have to squeeze into this article that I'm writing. I thought, what is another way to do that? And I think, like you're saying, like a theme, you mm -hmm. know, Like a little ticker type of thing. Well, another thing, and again, it's something that we've done as far as the podcast side is concerned, is that we will actually <coughs> kind of did it, incorporate it with the session breakdown. Is that we put a little link in there, which gives you your little, you know, click on this to learn more information, and then we actually have a, a, another, essentially, it's another post that we have then linked into the master post. Um, so that might be another suggestion as far as trying to make that concise, but yet having as much information as you you would need for it. Anybody else have any questions or anything like that? I mean, are you, are you using your blog? I'm sorry. Well, I kind of, I guess this would just be like a more personal thing. Um, I'm a teacher, so okay. I kind of look at like, I teach at a science and technology school. So I looked at using a blog for professional reasons, and then I have a lot of funny things that I would tell people that are probably really highly inappropriate to share, and hopefully my students don't get access to it from school. <coughs> so I kind of look at like myself in this fine line of division. You know, the snarky things I want to say to people, you know, and tell them where to go, and then the things that I <laughs> don't want to say. I absolutely you know understand, I mean? because until recently, not that I've been like an anonymous blogger by any means. I mean, I, I have a, a blog that I, I do. Um, I don't do it for business purposes, but there were some, there was certain information that I was keeping from there, and I would make snarky comments and stuff like that. And for the most part, people didn't know who I was, and I was okay with that. Um, obviously, doing PodCamp now, my name has become prevalent with everything. Instead of just going by my Twitter name, which is what my blog was through, um, it now has Missy Sorg associated with it, which then brings into that professional. Anonymity is, I think, your key component there. Yeah. <laughs> um, you obviously blog for your, you know, business professional purposes. Do you have, or are you interested in doing a secondary blog that would be separate and aside? I mean, I, I really haven't. I'm, I'm kind of figuring out what I want to do because, like, a lot of stuff would be like family stuff mm -hmm. and, and like things about my kids, you know, and things that go on in my personal life that I don't really connect to what I do at work. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I, I have two separate entities. Well, here's, here's the next question that, that I have, and it kind of, um, kind of a blogging alternative. I know that Facebook, because this is, this is how my mom actually keeps in touch with everybody, is through Facebook. She doesn't have a blog. She doesn't have any sort of thing. But um, through Facebook, you have notes. Yeah. Like, you have that little option. You can share with everybody that's on. You can share with <coughs> friends, family, you know, everybody, whatever. Um, that might be perhaps a solution, you know, as far as, like, your, your family-geared stuff. And then if they have a Facebook... It would then automatically yeah. go to them, essentially. So I, I do use Facebook, but I never, I really never delved into the whole thing. Yeah, like I said, I mean, my mom uses it almost like a blog. So I live in Pittsburgh. They live in Western New York. I don't get home very often, so whenever there's any sort of news from the family, you know, oh, so and so is pregnant, you know, she'll go ahead and do up a, a post. You know, my niece is pregnant. She's doing yada yada, and it's it's this nice little. The entire family then knows about it, and it's, hey, that's awesome news. You know, we'll call and congratulate, you. and it's. That seems to work out, so I, that might be something you might want to try. 
<laughs> now, I know that you're here. We had a brief conversation in the hallway. What are some of your questions? Uh, I guess maybe I don't need one to one. Maybe I need one to like one to go 27 or something. I don't even have to start. Okay. I don't even have to set one up. <clears throat> That's actually where I am, too. I just had my domain name, or well, not domain, but just through the blog, blog spot two weeks ago. Okay. Just figuring out like, where to go, where to get it started. No, I'm, I'm not even working for <laughs> <laughs> Okay, there's there's Blogger, which is the, the blog spot one that he's talking about. WordPress. I, I originally had a Blogger account, and then I switched it over to WordPress. Um, WordPress, I like WordPress. My friends, it was kind of peer pressure. They're, seriously, you're, you're Blogger. Okay, that's last year. WordPress has a lot more... It's, it's more user-friendly, in my preference. It, it, that's the easiest way I can say it. Sounds good to me. <laughs> well, yeah. you have, and I mine is very rudimentary. My husband's, on the other hand, he has all sorts of widgets. He has all sorts of different things that he's. I'm like, what's a widget? But um, yeah, I mean, he has a lot of different things that that he's got going on with his. That you have the options. You can add those plugins. Is essentially you know what they're called. And you log into your WordPress account. It takes you to your homepage, and it gives you the options right there. It sh it tells you how many entries you have, it tells you, you know, how many comments you have to each of those entries, and it just has a, a basic component so that you can see what, what you've been doing. Um, it has over on the right um, a quick press, which if you want to just do a quick blog entry, you can type in a title, you can start typing away, and if you if you know code, you can type in with, with code. Um, otherwise, you, I usually go, I can't do that either. <laughs> I will actually go to the posts over in the left, and it will take me into create new, it'll pull up a new page, and then it'll give me, I can put in my header, and then I can just free type. It'll give me, I can add links to different words, I can add pictures, I can add media, and it's relatively self-explanatory. Blogger and Blogspot, on the other hand, it was okay for me to use, but since I've switched over to WordPress, I would never go back to Blogger. That's just my personal preference, though. Um, and now, as far as specifically blogging. Do you have a kind of a blog niche that you're looking to, to do? Are you looking to blog about any certain particular topic? Um, mainly just like <coughs> I'm working on building a race car right now, so like just like the progress of that and just like trying to meet different car people around you know, Pittsburgh. Okay. You know, because I moved here about a year ago from Johnstown, so. Oh, so you're trying to. Trying to do a little bit of networking and find some like, new friends and whatnot. Okay. Well, that's definitely a good place to start. I mean, it, it gets stuff out there. Um, <coughs> My dad is actually a car guy. He rebuilds cars all the time. So, he the, give me your link and I'll probably pass along to him because I think it'd be something he'd be interested in. Um, you know, pictures. The nice thing about that is you can you can upload pictures. You can upload, <coughs> you know, you, you can tell like step by step processes to as to how it's going to be. Um, you you can either take it a personal approach, as in like, oh my god, I tried to do this today. I tried to get this part and it was just absolutely ridiculous. You know, this is what happened. Or you can actually take it to a more professional level that, you know, if, if you're looking to give a how-to type of thing, that, you know, this is the first step of the process, this is the second step of the process, you know, here, here you go more of an instructional basis, I'm not sure which way you're, you're looking to go with it, but... Yeah, I like to me just like, okay. here's all the crap I had to go through, and here's why it was a headache. Hey, there you go. And now, is this for just like one race car, or is this going to be for like multiple? Well, just one. Just one? Yeah. Okay, so what are you gonna do with your blog after you're done with it? Uh, <coughs> That's a good question. <laughs> okay, well, the best thing that I can say is just you know, give it a shot. You know, if you write something, and the nice thing about blogs is you you can go back and you can edit. If I write something up there and I'm like, eh, I guess I didn't really like what I said in that, you know, I, I'll go back and I'll change it. Nine times out of ten, I don't because I just let it go the way that it is. If somebody calls me out on it. Whatever. It's it's not a big deal as far as my thing is concerned. Might be something that you might be interested in keeping in mind for your stuff. As far as not having a blog, <laughs> like I said, you can go easily and set them up. Um, the nice thing about WordPress is that they also give you options that, you know, if you have a domain name that you've already purchased through, like, GoDaddy or something like that that's going to be hosting, they would allow you to, to bring it in. Um, if you're looking for hosting... 
there are all sorts of hosting sites available. Um, Andy Quayle, who's actually at PodCamp today, he's doing a session, I believe, either now or in the next hour. Um, I, I can give you his contact information. He does um, tubu.net, and he specifically, I, I know that they offer blogging packages. What they'll do is they will give you the domain name, they will give you the, the hosting and the registration, and pretty much it, it's just ready to go. Um, I believe that he, his works with a WordPress plugin automatically, I believe, but I'm sure that he has options available as far as, uh, you know, like Blogger or anything like that you, that you would want to go through as well. Um, the other option that some people do as far as blogs are concerned is they will actually take out their very own URL, they will do their own web page, they will not use any sort of Blogspot or anything WordPress, and they'll just do a straight up web page. So if, if you're geared toward you know, building websites and different things like that, yes? We're concerned that, Missy, uh, WordPress has a portable that you can install on a website. All you have to do is... Uh, yeah, that's, how, that's what Sorkos is. Yeah, what you do is you... Uh, all you have to do is just like name a database mm -hmm. and then put in your WordPress and then you can customize it for programs like Artist Steer. You can change your themes, um, the way it looks, how you set it up. You've got a static page, you have a blog page. So the, the options are incredible now as compared to, say, a few years ago. I would definitely agree with you. And, and you did bring up a nice thing as far as that's concerned is you can change the style, you can change the format of the blog. If you do go through something like WordPress or Blogger, they will actually, like when you're setting up the blog, they will take you step by step. And they have different templates that they automatically have put in. And it'll show you like what the page would essentially look like. Um, you know, what color scheme it would be, if there's any sort of design onto it, if there's any sort of, um, you know, like if my blog, for instance, I have my blog, and then I have um, a calendar on the side that links on the days that I write, so that that way if somebody wants to see, if, you know, if I refer to a post that I wrote on December 2nd of last year, they can then go into that calendar on December 2nd if I didn't link it, and then they can link back, they, they can check that post themselves to see what I'm referencing back to. Um, they also have options that you can put in if, if you have um, other blogs that you follow, you can do a blog roll. And that way when people go to your blog and they're looking at it, if they like what you're writing, they want to see what people you're reading, they can click and they can then go to somebody else's blog as well. Domain name is separate from the hosting. Right. And like I said, the, the hosting, I know that, I, again, I'm not entirely familiar with that entire process myself. I, uh, rudimentary is, is, is my understanding, unfortunately. Um, if you go to WordPress, they will generally ask you, do you have a URL already associated for this? You can say, yes, this is my URL, and then they will automatically just, yeah. Your, your blog will then link to that. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm assuming that Blogger also does the same thing. Again, I, I don't have my own domain name for my blog. I, it's, you know, rebelliousflaw.wordpress.com um, or whatever, wordpress.com backslash rebelliousflaw is what mine is. Um, so it's, it's nothing fancy. I don't do much with it other than just occasionally rant about different things here or there, or just, you know, random thoughts for the day. Um, so yeah, I, I myself don't. My husband, on the other hand, his goes through Sorgatron Media, or it goes through the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and it's WrestlingMayhemShow.com. So when you click that in, that goes to the Wrestling Mayhem Show page, which is essentially his blog for the Mayhem Show. So does he have a separate ISP that's hosting? Um, his uh, his hosting is through, I believe, GoDaddy. Okay. Okay. So uh, again, it's one of those situations where he went to WordPress, told him that GoDaddy is where this is through, click the button, and it just did its thing. Um, who do you have yours through? Blogger. It's just, okay. Yeah. Um, and your ISP? Blogger. It's just yeah. straight up through that, okay. Right. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, there's, there's links specifically on those blogging sites that will help you with that. Yeah. Um, okay. If you need more help with it, I can give you my email address and I can pass along to my husband. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's not a problem. Actually, Michelle Hammonds is doing the um, 
from Bird Baby. She's doing the 201 session. Hers is primarily about, you know, finding fodder and, and having r regular content. But she actually has, um, birdbaby.com is, is what the URL is. So she may even be able to answer some of those questions if you want to stick around for her session. I hope that answered your question as best I could. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any questions? You're still looking at me like you're doing that lights. <laughs> well, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to take it all in and sort it out and make sense of it. So okay. you go like to WordPress.com and that basically tells you how to do everything. It does. I mean, it's, it's very self-explanatory. Um, and the more that you actually go through it, you can see some of the features. Um, yeah, they have help, helpful tools and stuff like that in there that give you suggestions. If you know, you're trying to do this, it'll suggest that, hey, you might want to you know, try this. The best thing that I can say is, especially with WordPress, is just go in, just try things. If you don't like how it looks or if it you know, messes something up, there's a nice little undo button. Um, if you scroll all the way down at the bottom after your link, it gives you each and every single previous page. So like for um, the PodCamp Pittsburgh site, for instance, we go through WordPress. So any of the posts that go up, it's through WordPress. We have you know, our, our format that we do it. And I can go through, and if I actually want to have the front page of, of PodCamp, show the information and content of how we had the page last year when we were doing the event. I can click back through this. I mean, it's, it's a long list of revisions. I can click back through there. It tells me what date and what time it was edited, as well as since PodCamp, the website, we have a bunch of different people who have access to the site to edit content. It'll tell me who added that page, like who edited it at that time. I can click on that. It'll take me into another page. And it will ask, you know, is this what you want to revert it back to? I can click yes. So if you mess something up with it, essentially, you can always go back to a previous version. I know with uh, WordPress, it can be intimidating to start out with because of, you know, setting it up. Uh, a lot of users, um, if you buy a domain, a lot of companies like GoDaddy, <coughs> they have it built in to where you can install WordPress right from, from your list okay. that you can do that. Uh, you don't have to mess around with MySQL <coughs> databases and things like that. You can get right in if they want to run the game. Uh, that tends to be a little simple uh, as opposed to trying to figure out how to load it with FTP and that sort of thing. Thank you, because that's the stuff I mean, like I said, I don't yeah. have my own. I, I just simply went through whatever you know WordPress gave me, and that's, I don't care. <laughs> yes. Another popular hosting company is Foursquare. <coughs> oh, Foursquare really does hosting. They, they help as well. Okay. Uh, also, keep in mind that if you do run into any technical things, you, there's also the WordPress codex that you can look up on Google. And the search engines are pretty amazing because I had some problems with Table. And ah, okay. I typed it in. I got a few random articles, but once I narrowed down my search, everything was fine with it. Uh, WordPress codex is a large database. Game. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and extrapolate a little bit on, on that comment that um, what he's talking about with the WordPress codex is WordPress, there's two different ways that you can add a blog post in WordPress. You go in, like I said, it, it, t it gives you this little blank space where you can put in the title for the blog, and then it gives you this nice big chunk space that you can actually start typing in. There's two tabs up there that says, um, I, I think it's regular view and HTML. Now, I stay away from the HTML for the most part because I do not know much HTML. And I know that if you don't get it just right or if you miss a dot here or you miss, you can, it, it, well, it doesn't like that. <laughs> so, so primarily what I do is I will go through and I'll actually just write out just plain English, whatever I'm, I'm doing. And then I will, like I said, they have little links at the top. I can add video, I can add photos, I can add links, I can, and it's pretty much spelled out right there. If you want, after the session, um, I, I can kind of show you pretty much step by step how to how to go through it. I can add to that. Yes. <coughs> uh, you have visual and HTML. What's interesting is if you happen to play with HTML even a little bit, you switch over to visual, and in most cases, if your HTML works, you can see it pop up in visual. Thank I, you. Because I, I don't do that much, so I don't I see that. Do, like I said, I did the tabling. Mm -hmm. I want to see. How my table fit across my blog. 
Oh. On their sides. Okay. So once I put the coating in, all I did was mess with the numbers and switch back and show me how large the table was. And I oh, could, wow. I can talk with the, uh, the lines on and off. Okay. So that obviously is, is a pretty good suggestion. Um, like, I, I know myself, a lot of the stuff that I've, I've done through the PodCamp website has been kind of copy and paste, like, especially for the, um, the schedule that we have linked. That was literally, I put the schedule together in Microsoft Excel. We created different web pages for each of the sessions so that I could put the content up there for, you know, the, the title of the session, whether it's beginning, intermediate, whatever, so, that information. And then... I went back into the Excel document, and then I was able to add the link. Literally copied and pasted the entire Excel document into WordPress. And it was fine, except I didn't know how to get the grid lines to show up. So if you actually look at the site, that's why there are no grid lines. I didn't know how. <laughs> Anybody that I could have asked was kind of busy at the moment since we were, you know, a few days away from the event itself. So I just kind of, eh, people get the idea. They can click on the session. It'll go into this thing. They'll get the idea. It'll be good to go. But that's one of the things that I'm going to look at for future references to how to do that. That is a good pointer as to, as to that. <coughs> your copy and paste? Yes. Watch your copy and paste. Pull it from emails. Uh, even if you have HTML on your email and you go to copy it over, You'll have a uh, <coughs> run over where you'll have the, the body and then you'll have it overlap on itself. Oh. If you want to pull text and if that email happens to contain something from the website. Oh, it'll pull that content as well. Pull the content. Well, you should pull the content from the website instead of the email. Oh, okay. Because you'll see your text and you'll see something, you'll see another set of text run right over it. Okay. Thank you for that as well. You're I crashed more computers than you Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Sword laughs at me, like seriously, because every once in a while, and especially doing the pod camp stuff, I will sit there. What takes me an hour to do, he can do in five minutes. But it's one of those situations where I want to learn the process, so I will take that hour as long as I have it to kind of feel my way through it. There were a few times, especially with the pod camp stuff, that it just got to the point where I was do it because I just I don't know how to do it. It's frustrating me. Just do it. It's nice to have somebody like that available. Um, I do have that conveniently. There you go. But the nice thing about you guys being here is that you're going to be getting contacts for people that, hey, this is what I'm looking to do. I hear that you can do this or that you can give me some pointers on this if you've done this. And networking is an amazing thing as far as the event is concerned, primarily for those types of purposes. Yes. Who's the gentleman that you said um, has like the the site or whatever the company that's put puts together the, the blog like a turnkey solution? You said he was here today. Oh, um, Andy Quayle. Andy Quayle. With Tubu dot net. Tubu T U B U. T U B U. T U B U dot net. I think it's dot net. Yes. Oh, I was going to say, I knew it was either right now or next. Um, I know that he indicated that he may not be able to be here all day um, because he also works um, as an emergency response. I believe he's on call this, af this afternoon or something like that. But um, if anybody needs contact information, he's wonderful to talk with, and he's, he's more than willing to tell people about it. I mean, he's one of our volunteers here today because this is what he loves to do. He just loves to be able to help him give back to part of the community and if it's something he can help you with. You know, he's, he's all about that sort of stuff. So as far as blogging is concerned, I mean, what ex are there any other questions I getting back to everything? Um, I mean, we've obviously talked about what the blog is, generally speaking, how to get one. And any questions as to, again, why you would need one? Because I know that that's one thing that, that's one question that I get quite frequently is, what's the point of blogging? I actually had a conversation with a gentleman uh, at the meet and greet last night that, what's the point, why do I need to know what, you know, your baby ate yesterday? <laughs> what do I care? Blogging is an individualized thing. Like I kind of touched upon the, at the onset, some people blog about specific niche things. Your car, for instance. 
you know, that's a niche thing, that's something that you enjoy to do. Um, there's another woman that I, I've met this weekend that um, she does biker stuff here, and that's what she primarily talks about. She has a huge community with bikers, and that's her niche. Um, there's a lot of other types in it. We, we've got a political blogger, so there's, there's a niche that's found. Myself, I can honestly say I don't have a niche. I just write about whatever I feel like writing about for the day. Um, sometimes it's politics, sometimes it's, you know, religion has been in there a couple times. Um, sometimes it's just my day-to-day -day stuff. Um, I haven't blogged much recently, primarily because between my 9 to 5 and pod camp, my time has just been overwhelmed. Uh, that just finding time to write has been a difficult task. And I know that's one of the things that Michelle is actually going to be picking up in the in the 201 session is she writes every single day. How the woman does it, I have no idea. She has a young daughter at home. She works during the day. Um, she has a very active social life, and yet she makes sure that she has content each and every single day for her blog. Um, her blog primarily revolves around her daughter. Um, you know, different things that have occurred throughout the day with, with raising her and different things like that. But it's important to kind of know what you're putting out there for people. Because if you don't have direction, if you don't have something that you specifically want to say, people aren't going to read. There's a reason why that's church has so many followers. It's because, you know, Virginia Montanez, she, she gets out there, she has something to say. She's poignant about it, and she gets it out there. Um, people pick up on different things, and they will then link back to the site if it's something that they have, you know, stumbled upon or they have found through whatever sources. And that's how you're... I guess your exposure, that, that's how that grows. And it all depends upon you and your writing. I mean, if, if, you're, if you write once every six months, people really aren't going to be following your blog because they never know when you're going to have current content. One of the nice things, again, about uh, the WordPress, and I believe, again, Blogger does the same thing, is that um, I can... I have, I have a button on mine for uh, RSS feed, which, when I blog... Anybody who has, who's following my RSS feed knows that I blog. They get a little message. Um, they get an, It goes into their blog reader through, I think, Gmail. Uh, the majority of people do it. And they know that I've posted new content. The other thing that I'll do is, um, if it's something that I want people to read, I will also link it on Facebook and Twitter. So that way my friends know that, hey, you know, Missy's got some updates on, on what's going on. So that way they know that they can go ahead and read it, see what's going on, and then comment accordingly. Uh, yes? The, the whole, uh, last point I'm interested in, when you look at blog, Twitter, and Facebook, mm -hmm. is it pretty much just the audience which their preferred mode is? I know Twitter is constrained with the length, I guess. But. Yeah, um, it depends. Um, I have people on my Facebook, for instance, that I don't have on Twitter, and vice versa. My friends on Twitter are primarily my friends. My friends on Facebook consist of primarily family, church members, um, you know, friends that I knew from high school who don't necessarily know me outside of that realm. There are some things that I'll, I, I'll say on Twitter that I don't necessarily want expressed on Facebook and vice versa. So I myself keep those separate. Other people that I know actually link those accounts so they will, whenever they tweet something, it automatically goes to Facebook. Whenever they do something on Facebook, it automatically sends to Twitter that they've updated their Facebook. Um, with blog posts, it's kind of the same thing. Um, if there's a blog that I want my Twitter friends to read, I'll link it in there. As far as, um, I, I know that sometimes if you have a long blog uh, title, it'll extend past 140 characters. I go to tinyurl.com you can copy and paste in that large URL and literally make it a short URL that will fit into Twitter. You click on that and then you're good to go. Um, it gives you another link, you copy and paste that over into your Twitter feed, hit your send, and you're set. Um, you know, Facebook again. Facebook actually is kind of interesting when you, when you link a blog post because it will recognize it as a blog post, and if you have any images up there, it will actually pull the image from the link that you've put in, and that way when it puts it up in your 
feed, it has a little picture next to it. Pictures draw attention. People are more apt to look at it, see the picture, and then want to read it. So that's definitely something that you can do if, if you're so inclined. Any other couple quick questions? Uh, we've got a few minutes left here. Why don't you take us through um, like WordPress.com? Because I've only done like kind of the .org stuff. I, I think it'd be kind of interesting to see like, well, where do we go? How do we start to set this up? you've got the My Account, you can go ahead and click on that, and it has this nice little drop down. You can do a new quick post, quick press post, you can edit your profile, and do all that stuff there. I usually just click on the My Account in order to get started with it, or I'm sorry, that's not what I click on, but it takes you into the side over here. Um, posts, this is the one that I was talking about, that anything, any of the things that you've posted, there you go. It goes through all of my blog posts by date, um, and it puts the most recent at the top. So you see here, so the car is down again. I recently had some car problems. You click into it, and this is where you can go ahead and put your title in, and then you can type in through here. If you want to add a photo, which I've done to some of mine, you can go ahead and do this, and it's upload insert. You can either get it from your computer, so you would you know, choose to select the files, just like you would with any other thing that you're going to be uploading. Um, if you have a URL that's linked to, a lot of people do this with like their Flickr photos, they'll link to from the URL. Or the media library. Um, different photos that I've already uploaded are automatically saved. Um, if I want to re-upload one of them to use for a later post, instead of going through the process of finding it on my computer again and then uploading it again, all I can all I have to do is go through there. So I would go ahead and select whatever one that I wanted to do, click over here on the show, and then it gives me the option insert into post over here. Now in addition I can change the name of the title. If there's alternate text that I want to put into it, which I honestly don't use that feature much. Um, a description, the link URL it automatically, once I upload the file, it assigns it a URL through WordPress so that that way when somebody clicks on the photo, it can open into a larger photo. Um, I have the option that I can go ahead and do no alignment so that I can just kind of drag it where I want it to be, left, center, or right. I usually do mine automatically center. Um, size, you can also do thumbnail, medium, large, or whatever size the actual photo is. I usually do medium just because it fits well within the post, and it just makes life a little bit easier. You click insert into post, and you're good to go. Um, up here under my blogs, I, ha I have two different blogs that I actually have for here. So I have my not so warm and fuzzy thoughts, which is my normal blog that if people go to rebelliouswallet.wordpress.com, that's the one they're going to. And then I have stroke of inspiration, which was my poetry influenced. I was I was had some creative writing that I wanted to share, so I had kind of put that up there. I don't think I've actually used that one now for at least a year. So I've kind of not had any content to, to be going on that one. Um, if I want to go into my not swarm and fuzzy thoughts, I can go into my dashboard and that will again take me back to the main site. Now this is what I'm saying is that it'll tell you how many posts you currently have. I have one page, so I don't have multiple pages linked within each other, um, kind of like the PodCamp site does. I have one page. 
Um, categories are the categories that you set, um, kind of like the, the hashtags that we do for, for the PodCamp content. That lists what you're doing. Um, tells me how many comments that I have, tell me how many have been approved, and then it automatically marks different comments as spam. So I will occasionally go in there, and usually it's just um, you know bots that, that pick up your, your content because of keywords, and they'll just respond to stupid stuff back or whatever. So I usually just leave those as spam if it's marked as spam, because nine times out of ten, that's what it is. If you scroll down, you can see your recent comments, and it'll tell you what the post is that somebody had commented on. You can have a brief little thing um, about what specifically they're commenting. You can also track how many stats you have for the day. Um, September 18th, for instance, somebody's been looking at my blog four times today. So um, I've had four four people checking that out. <laughs> Earlier in the month, I had 17. So I don't really have a huge following as far as my blog is concerned, and I'm fine with that. You know, Some people are specifically gearing it toward I want as much exposure as possible. I'm more gearing mine as I just have stuff to say, and I just want to say it. Instead of keeping a diary, I keep a blog. I keep that out there so everybody can read. <laughs> so is, is that kind of what you were looking for as far as? Yeah. OK. No, yeah, that's great. It's, it's, I, I can't get over how similar this interface is to my WordPress.org interface. It's pretty much the same interface. It's just how it's hosted. Yeah, and that's exactly it. Like This it. is straight up through WordPress. Okay. Um, the other nice thing is that you have these off the side. If you want to, I know that I uploaded a picture. I can't find it. If you go into your media, that will automatically take you to your, your media page. And that, that way you can look through and double check and see what the different photos are. Um, if you want to check your comments, you can click over into your comments. And that, again, will take everything by date and everything like that. And this actually shows your full comments. Um, links. If you have links that you've gotten in there, I don't do much by way of links. I don't have many links tracking back to me, so it's, it, these are both through WordPress, and those are my my blog roles. Yes? Is NextGen included in WordPress.com? I'm sorry? The NextGen galleries? Uh, what it is, the ability to set up an album? That I am not sure about, I know to be honest. I know it's portable, where you can, you can bring it to a uh, mm -hmm. domain. And you can set up a gallery page, or you can, you can start to organize your albums. And you can include, like, one album could have, like, oh, ungodly amounts of uh, separate sections, mm -hmm. dating sections, or whatever. And I was just curious if the WordPress.com had a, uh, the next gen. Yeah, that I'm not entirely sure of. Again, that, that's a little bit over my head. Do you, do you, do you have the access to plugins? Yes. Um, okay, then you can probably, probably get the next gen plugin. Okay, that's, yeah, I have not, honestly myself, I'm I'm intimidated by the plugins. I'll, I'll be completely honest. Um, any plugins that I would have on here, Sorg has gone in because he absolutely hates how my blog either looks or how it doesn't function the way that he thinks it should. So he will go in, he, he, will, he will just automatically do this, and he's like, here, this will make your life and mine a lot easier. He'll do it. I'll play around with it. I don't even generally notice that there's a difference. It's nothing else that I have to do. It's just automatically done because he set it up. Again, that's one of the nice things that I have that not everybody does, but that's one thing that you can get by being here is, and talking to people is that experience, and you can get somebody that you can you know, bounce those questions off of. I'll give you my side address if you want to help. You can see how it works. Okay. Oh, I, I just yeah, assume that's... Yeah, just go to uh, www.back2hiking, B-A-C-K-T-O-H-I-K-I-N-G.com. And there's a gallery page. I just refurbished the gallery page. Okay, there you go, your galleries. Now, instead of coming up, scroll, yeah, it's a static page. Oh, okay. So then you can... And then you can the click heights. on the separate. Now this page is this page is generated by the. Uh, oh, we have a 404 error on that one. The page is that's what you know. I don't know I have because I, I tested them all last night. I'm going to go back and see if you can bring up any bring on uh, 29 or generate 404. Let's see if that's good back. Yep. Yep. Okay. You're generating 404. See so what happens when you mess with me. 
HTML? <laughs> this is why I don't. Okay, on the right hand side, the one thing that is functioning, you see the picture? That's the next gen. Over here. Okay. I'm gonna click on that and see what that does. It's loading. Get a 404. Oh, it's loading. It's loading. That's gorgeous. That what it does is that brings up uh, random images as you load the pages. Okay. And that way people can kind of see what you're doing. And if there's a picture that they want to specifically see, like that's a different picture that's now. So yeah, that just refreshes. Load the page. Awesome. So yeah, I mean, there's, there's lots of things that you can do with your blog. Um, my recommendation for the majority of people is jump into something like, you know, I, again, I love WordPress, so I, I'm going to push WordPress. Jump into something like WordPress.com. Just experiment with it. See what you want to do. Um, have some options with it. If you see another website that you, you like how they do something, contact the webmaster. A lot of times these people are just, you know, average people like a lot of the people doing these sessions here. And they're cool with the idea of sharing their experience in order to help people out. So the biggest thing is is just to, you know, find out what you want to write about, get your domain, you know, whether it be an actual domain like this backtohiking.com that you can then put towards something like WordPress, like what he's done, or just go ahead with the WordPress just straight up through WordPress, having them hosted. You know, how, however you feel that you want to do it. And even if you do a WordPress hosted blog, if you decide later on that you want to have your own dedicated site for for your own blog, you can go ahead and do that, and then you can import that over into whatever site you, or domain that you decide to go with. Any other questions? Well, I think that that just about does our, our time here. Um, Blogging 201 with Michelle of uh, birdbaby.com will be up next, and she's again going to be covering content. You know, you, you've got a blog now, what do you do with it? Um, how do you keep people coming back, and how do you keep active content? So if you'd like to stick around and hang out for her, she'll be in shortly.